sound check again, mate? Breakfast? Breakfast, it was still Weetabix. Still Weetabix. <laughs> it isn't normally, but... Oh, yes. What we're doing here at the moment is we're building the mid-infrared instrument, which is one of the four scientific instruments to fly on the James Webb Space Telescope. The James Webb is the successor to Hubble. It's one of the big NASA-ESA joint missions, um, part of the Great Observatory series, going to launch in 2014 uh, to go out and continue Hubble's astronomy work but in much more detail and in longer wavelength band, looking in the infrared rather than Hubble, which looks at the optical stuff that we can see with our eyes. This is a picture of the, of the telescope. Um, the top side, the top half, is the sciencey side. This is where all the instruments sit, and the light's collected by this enormous primary mirror. Bounced out to out here, where we've got a secondary mirror, goes through the middle and into the back where the science instruments, the cameras and the spectrometers, sit and actually capture the light, turn it into digital signals that we can then send down to the ground. Well, this, this mirror's six and a half metres across, so it's, um, it's an enormous mirror, much bigger than the Hubble mirror, which is just over a metre. Um, and the size of the whole spacecraft is enormous. This um, sun shield that we have here that keeps everything on the top side cold and everything on the bottom side warm is just over the size of a tennis court. So when it actually launches, it launches inside a rocket which is much smaller than that so everything has to fold up so the primary mirror folds around, this comes over the top, folds over the top and the whole sun shield folds up around it like an origami trick. So what we're doing here is we're building one of those four cameras so a quarter of it, a quarter of the science capability is being built here in the UK. Um, so what we've got is the flight model, the final um, the final one that's actually going into space, which we're just finishing the final assembly of before we begin the testing and calibration of that early next year. So the, the flight model, the instrument, is in the clean room over here through these windows. Yeah, so this is what's called a class five or class 100 clean room. Um, they're specified in terms of how many particles of a certain size there are in one cubic meter of air. Class 100 is basically as clean as almost anything needs to be. The only places that are cleaner in the UK are things like silicon um, factories where they make computer chips. Um, they're almost entirely automated, you don't have people working in them. This is basically as clean as, as clean as you'd ever need to get really. So the reason that we have to keep everything so clean is so that, first for what's called particulate, that's little specks of dust. If you get specks of dust on mirrors or on the um, detectors on the camera, you'd see it in the pictures and you'd see stars that weren't there or it would block out the light and it would also sort of scatter light so you'd have a, a sort of background there. The other reason is things like oils, uh, what's called molecular contamination and that would cause when you're looking at the spectra of stars we're trying to examine what the elements are and so if you'd got a film of a type of oil on the mirrors or on the lens you'd see the spectra of that oil rather than of whatever you're observing. It's currently got a cover on, we keep the instrument covered whenever we can just in case there was a power failure or anything, um, it's just a case of minimising risk. So we'd have to go in to take that cover off if we actually want to see the instrument. So to do that we'll have to go, go on into the clean room, get everything cleaned up, get dressed up to get in there and, um, and go on in. Okay, so just taking that off because there's no way we'd ever be able to get the furry, um, furry windshield clean so that can stay outside okay. when we go in. So then basically we've got these wipes which are ever so slightly tacky so we wipe everything down with these that'll get all the um, d dust particles. It is really important, yeah. We, we do see evidence of whenever we bring anything in we can see it on the particle counters. We have what's called a wrist strap. So this is to protect the sensitive electronics from electric shock. So you know how when you walk across a carpet, you'll charge up and then if you touch a door handle, you feel an electric shock. That's about 2,000 volts that you're actually able to feel. Um, some of the sensitive electronic components can be damaged by anything up to about 3 volts. So to prevent us charging up and then discharging to it, we use a strap like this that we connect to an electrical ground at any point when we're anywhere close to the instrument or sensitive hardware. Right, so now we can go through and go into the AIT clean room and have a look at Mary. So just step on this 
Matt slightly tacky, it'll pick up anything that's on the bottom of the shoes that's just been picked up on the floor. So this is Miri, the mid-infrared instrument. Uh, this is the final flight build. This is the one that's going to go out to NASA, get integrated to the spacecraft and be launched in about four years' time. So what we have here is a combined camera and spectrometer. It does both things in one. It both takes images and it can determine what type of light, what the different colours of light are coming uh, into the thing. So it starts off with the light coming in down at the bottom here. This is what's called the input optics. So there's a red cover currently on the aperture. That's where the light comes in through there. It bounces off a mirror and comes up into this unit here, which is the imager. So this was provided by France, CEA in France, shipped over. In there, there's a filter wheel that's got 18 different positions. That came from Germany. Um, the light shines through there and bounces around onto the detector, the camera, sat over at the back here. So this is a very recent addition. We just we fitted those last week. Um, we had a team out from NASA in JPL in California. They came over here and helped us. We installed all three detectors onto the instrument and just finished that work last Friday. Well, it's so big for two reasons. One is that it's got a very large field of view. So the the, in, the size of the field that comes into it is quite large. So it has to be quite large to take the the field of view to compress it down it has a series of mirrors in it and then the other reason is the top half this whole top half of the instrument is what's called the spectrometer so the light comes in here bounces through a series of mirrors that formats and focuses the light and then comes out into these um, legs that stick out of the instrument these are what are called integral field units they're a very clever little optical device that slices and dices the light and then lines it all up into a row so that you've got long wavelength at one end and short wavelength at the other. It then goes back into here onto another mechanism and then grating on that mechanism disperses the light so that it turns it into a square field but in a series of stripes with low wavelength at one end and high wavelength at the other but it actually allows us to then recombine that image into a picture so you can get a, a picture at each wavelength all at the same time. Other types of spectrometer you have to take a series of images one after the other this allows you to capture it all together so it's much more efficient for when you're observing in space. I think it's mostly beautiful there's a few ugly ugly bits where we've had to make slight adjustments and uh, yeah it's certainly very elegant and um, it's an amazingly small, you say it looks like a large camera, it's amazingly small and compact for what it's doing. Um, it's the smallest of the four instruments on JWST by a long way. Um, and very unusually, it's come in under mass budget. Normally, uh, a spacecraft instrument would be sized at a certain mass, and then it would grow and grow as you go through the detailed design and have to add bits and things. This has stayed almost exactly the same mass budget. The margin that we had, we've been able to give away to other instruments that have had problems. And so it's come, come out about 20% under budget. 